Hello everyone. So I wanted to come in and show you guys a really, really quick, neat project that you can do. Um, if you're a plant lover like I am, then you may want to hang your plants outdoors um, in a sheltered environment, uh, maybe under a deck or um, off of a deck or anywhere that you feel, uh, maybe even off of a fence post that you feel would be beneficial for your plants to get some sunlight for the season of summer and also um, be sheltered from any nibbling little critters like rabbits and, or cats or anything, dogs or anything like that. So in front of you, I have a, a plant holder and this is a crocheted plant holder that's sort of like a macrame plant holder. And so I wanted to quickly show you guys how to do this on a budget. Most of these macrame projects require you to buy rope. So you don't necessarily have to buy rope. You can actually crochet um, the fibers. Excuse my, my nails. I was actually going to get ready to take the nail polish off, so I'm sorry that it's all chipped. But anyway, um, you can actually crochet your, your rope and make it out of crocheted yarn. Um, and once you do the single stitches, um, the chains, they actually turn into rope. And then you can make those into knots which will make the plant holders. So following at the end, you'll see some pictures, and at the beginning of this video, you probably saw a picture of a plant hanging in one of the plant holders. But um, another way that you can do it to make it even more economical is to use shower curtain hooks. Like, so they often tell you in the other macrame projects to purchase these wire or metal little hooks from like your Hobby Lobby or your whatever your craft store is nearby but you don't have to you can go to your local dollar store and you can use a, a shower curtain hook so I have a couple here and they're really reasonable these are left over from an old project uh, old shower curtains and I don't know why I kept them but I did so I didn't have to buy anything um, but outside of that you're going to need some scissors and I have some scissors here and then I have some old uh, I guess you can say this is like thread uh, material here that I had gotten uh, on a spool and I'll show you that at the end. But anyway, so let's put all this aside. So to make your own rope, you're just going to need to, and I'm a lefty, so this may look a little bit awkward to you, um, but you're just going to need to make a, a loop like that, right? And then once you make the loop, you're going to stick it inside and I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but you're gonna pull it like that until you have like a, a little hook like that, okay? And then you take this and you're gonna just make chains. Just like if, if you're a crochet, you'll totally get this part. And it's so simple, it goes by so fast. The only thing you need to determine is how long you want your um, plant holder to be. So for my purposes, I do want them to be somewhat at eye level so that way I can monitor if my Orchid plants are dry uh, or wet, so I'm not overwarding them. So I'm going to make mine at 20, no, actually 200, 220 little single crochet chains. So let's go ahead and show you that. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And then you'll keep going as far as you need until you get to your number, which mine is 220. So once you have them all, um, for your macrame project, you need to have everything in increments of even numbers. So it has to be even. So. Most people like to go with 12, um, but I opted for less to make eight. So I have pre-crocheted or single, crochet, single chained eight strings. So once you take them out, there's one, two, three, four, five, six there. It got a little tangled there, so let's let's just put it out here. So there you go, two, four, six, and that's eight. So what I do at this point is I'm actually going to tie the ends together. 
Um, and I like to do it this way, so I'll show you guys that and um, we'll come right back. Let me go ahead and even up all the ends. And when I say even up the ends, I'm just going to take them so that the string, whatever, it doesn't matter if they're uneven at the end, but I'm just making sure that all the strings match up like that. So let me stop this and I'll show you guys in a minute. So I have now officially tied um, the ends together. So I took a little piece of ribbon that I had and I just tied them like that. This helps me to get everything nice and neat. So like it's just like pulling out the, because now it looks like rope, right? So it's just pulling everything out so that it's nice and neat. And then you decide how long you want it. So I think about right there is good. And so what I'm going to do is just make a, a knot. And I'm just going to pull that little piece in through there and I'm going to straighten everything up, pull a little bit, straighten it up, pull. And that is it. So now at this point, I can take this ribbon off and I tied it really tight. So. Okay. So take the ribbon off, and there I have the end of my my macrame crocheted little play holder. So now at this point, I have a pot. So I'm going to take this pot, and let me just see if you guys can see that really clearly. Okay, that's a little better. So I have this pot here, and I want to divide everything into fours. So I have a total of eight threads, and I like to mix and match the colors, just, you know, that's just how I like to start it. They're going to blend together, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, we won't worry about that, but I, I usually try to mix and match the colors. So once I have the pot, like, sort of situated, even though this is an oval pot, I'm sort of situating the strands in groups of two by uh, sections of four. So this is four, two, four. And then there's two little threads there. So then I'm going to take this piece, I call it like the ponytail, and I'm just going to stick that right in the middle. And then I tried to have it like a square. So if you're looking at the top, which you guys can't see, maybe I'll try to show you. See how that looks like a square? Um, that's what you want. So I have this piece of old fabric here string from cutting at the end this is my anchor so I'm just going to take this and hold it down and this is what's going to help me keep everything into place as I make the knots and it doesn't have to be really like accurate because this is a homemade project guys so it's not perfect by any means but again that's what gives a character it makes it unique and it's cheap, it's economical. Hopefully it's some of the supplies that you already have in your home. Um, I'm a crocheter, so I have um, yarn already available to me. So this was like very, very easy, very, very economical and easy. It just takes a little time um, to crochet all of these little strands, but that's not that bad. So now I'm just making everything nice and tidy so that I can start to do the knotting process so this is important you want everything to be like out the way so that you don't have to worry about the strands getting in the way of your work okay so i like to start to the pieces that's closest to me but for this demonstration i'll start to you so what you want to do is want to take about your fingers width away from the pot and make a knot and that's about from the from the center about one full finger and that's the the base of the pot so this is going to hold the pot and it'll be like this the stop point so you're just going to make a basic knot nothing fancy again just to, just like we did you're going to loop it over and pull through okay there is your first knot and you're just going to tighten it up make it sort of loose and there it is so you make sure that that's out the way then you're going to do again about a finger's width. So then you're going to take a knot and knot it through. Pull it through.
and you want to try to have them somewhat equal distance and length. So um, keeping that in mind, I'm going to try to stick with the finger um, measurement. And I find for smaller pots it's best to have your knots closer together. For larger pots you can go with a little bit more distance but not too much distance because you don't want the pot to, to fall through. But I did find that that's like a little key to make things a lot easier. So again another finger distance. Okay. So this is the second phase, and you're going to repeat this second phase um, over as much as as high as you want, as how as long as you want your pot holder to be. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take a thread of those two, and you're going to make like a friend, um, like a new pair. And I'm not going to braid it right away, but I just sort of pair it together so that way it helps me to keep track of which ones that I've done or haven't done. So I just twist them together like that, and then I twist these two together, and see how the colors are, are blending? This is a multicolor yarn too, so um, I didn't like blend these colors together. The, the yarn had like a variation of colors that as you crochet with it, it would just come out that way. So okay, so for the first one, we're going to still try to keep that finger, finger length, um, so it's about that long maybe a little longer but about there is good and you want to try to make sure it's even on both sides so I think that's about good right there and you're just eyeballing everything and you're going to make a new knot and if you made these like too big or too too wide. The good thing about it is you make your knot loose at first and all you do is just slide. And then that way you can adjust it as you need. Okay, so there's one more. So now you see the pattern. So these were like a pair and now we made a new pair. And so now we're going to make a new pair. So you're just going to repeat that whole process. So I'm not going to do everything on camera. I'll come back towards the end and then you guys can see it. And I'll show you pictures. Um, uh, well, actually, I'll show you how I do the top. And then that's pretty much it. That, that's the whole process. So hold on. Let me finish this part and we'll come right back. Okay, everyone, so I have finished the knotting process, and I just wanted to show you guys before we start to work on the top of what it looks like. And so as you can see, this is it. Um, I did three rows from the bottom. From So if you turn it sort of angular, you can count. So I did one, two, and then three. So that's it. And this one, I could have done just two. But I decided to go with another row because I want this one to be a little bit more sturdier at the top to give it a little bit more support for a plant that's sort of small so that way I can feel um, that it's very sturdy. And then this is the bottom. And you can make this bottom longer if you wish, um, but I, I like it this size. And you can also divide the fibers at the bottom to make those a little bit more fluffy. Alright, so now that we have the pot in here, I like to, to do all of this at the while the plant is, or why it's in a pot, so I can see what I'm working with. So let me just take this out of view, and this is what we're going to do now. So we have all of this tassel up here, and I have an old shower curtain, like I mentioned to you guys earlier. So what I'm going to do now is take, I want to see the shell, so I'm just going to take the fibers and sort of slide it around the hook as you can see there and there and then I'm going to take that small thin cord and just wrap it and that's that's basically how I finish them off and so I leave a little piece um, up at the top there and then I'm just going to tightly wrap this cord around here and I'm going to work my way down and then work my way back up hope you guys can see this, so sorry if you can't, but all I am doing is just wrapping as you can see. Nothing, nothing super fancy. You just want to try to make sure that they don't necessarily over, overlap on top of each other as much. Um, and it doesn't matter if you can see some of the 
fibers it doesn't really matter to me like that and you can go down as far as you want but I don't want a really really long cord um, at the top so I figure about maybe two inches and then I can work my way back up and I think the top being sort of frilly gives it its own unique design so now you can go a little bit faster because you're now you're wrapping over top of what you already wrapped and it's giving it like this uh, this like woven look sort of like a tassel okay and it does like I said it doesn't have to be perfect if you want to conserve your fibers that's totally fine too and that's it well I'll go up a little higher because I left the other piece up really high now I can bring that back down so now I'm going to join the two pieces I uh, hope you guys can see this clearly and all I'm going to do is make a knot so have that here and I'm just making a knot and I'm going to knot this like three four times and you cannot see this at this point but you know how to make knots right so it's not hard just keep knotting it Another knot. And that's that's good enough. So now you're just going to cut off those excess fibers. And voila. That's it. Just straighten up everything and these fibers will just hang. And you now you have your official plant holder. And I'll have pictures at the end so you can see the full product. But this is what the, the little hook, and again, I use recycled materials. So I didn't have to go out and buy anything. And I think it looks pretty cute. And you can make them any colors you want. And again, just making cord out of crochet yarn. And you're just single crocheting, or chain stitching rather, um, till you get the desired length that you want. Alright, check out the pictures at the end. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and share. Share with somebody else that maybe they could use this information to help hang their plants for the summer. Or even in your house, you can get more intricate, um, make more designs, add beads, add little ornaments to this rope to really, really dress it up. Alright, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Till next time. Bye.